Um, here are the questions here. Uh, wait for a moment. Okay. Uh, the first question is, what causes believers to believe in the pastors than in God? Well, uh, the responsibilities is uh, on the pastors themselves. Do they lead the believers to follow, you know, to believe in God or in themselves? You know, if the pastors emphasize, you know, how powerful I am, how, how good I am, uh, how you should follow me, then the, the members would believe in the pastor rather than in God. And that is wrong because uh, God, because every human being has problems. And, uh, you know, the moment when people, you know, uh, believe in a pastor and trust in a pastor and they find that he has faults, then it, you know, it um, influences their, their spiritual life. And also God is not happy with that because he is, uh, he is taking the glory of God away from God and put it onto himself. So God is not happy with that. So we should always tell people, you know, look at how wonderful God is, how God is doing all these good things. And even when the pastor is experiencing blessings of God, he should say, it's God who gave all this to me. It's God who is the source of all goodness. So we trust in God and rejoice in God. So my teaching of um, uh, God's nature Bible study and God's nature preaching method would always glorify God, let people see how God, how good God is. And then also, uh, I encourage people always to rely on God and trust in God, rejoice in God, okay? Is condemning sinners sin? Okay, now the Bible tells us not to, you know, uh, condemn people. Whatever the Bible tells us what to, not to do, when we do it, then it's sin. So, um, now, how about when we follow uh, Matthew 18? Matthew 18, that if someone offends you, you first talk to the person, uh, person to person, and then talk to you. Um, the, if he doesn't listen, bring one or two persons, and then if not, bring the whole church. And then if he uh, refuses to repent, then regard him as a, a, a Gentile, as someone not a believer then uh, now in that sense then it's not sin but in a sense that we ourselves condemn people that is sin so we we don't want to condemn people we want to try to save them try to help them uh, instead of condemning them that when we see people have problem we just have compassion on them we want to help them okay okay number three what can we do especially in a marriage where uh, one of the couple is born again and the other is one is not. Well, uh, then it's become difficult because the other person might be, you know, uh, might not have the motivation to love or to listen. And so the other person, the Christian, should have the responsibility to really love the other person and don't think of it as a loss. Think of it as a way we... Uh, glorify God and how we bless the other person when we continue to bless the other person be nice to the person even if the other person is not nice now some people would think this is not fair now even though it's not fair but when we are kind to the other person uh, there's a chance to change the other person that the person uh, after years of seeing the Christian you know uh, loving him and caring for him and it could influence a non-Christian to believe in Jesus. And also, God is happy with the Christian doing that. So we should, uh, as a Christian, we still should love the other person, be kind to the other person. Now, if the other person is, is abusing him, abusing this Christian, then it depends on uh, the degree of abuse. If he is beating, if the non-Christian is beating the Christian with a, uh, a rod and that can kill the Christian then the Christian should should uh, not stay with him because that could cause his life um, now if it's just verbal then the Christian should learn not to take the verbal abuse personally not to 
always think of the abuse and, and be frustrated, be angry, but to say, He cannot hurt me because I have God. When I love God, God will bless me so I don't have to be offended by Him. I can have the blessings of God so I don't have to be angry with Him and I can still be nice to Him and God is happy with me. So this value of uh, overcoming wickedness with goodness is, you know, is from the Bible. That even though the other person is not treating me right, we still treat the other person with love and kindness and that could change the person. But this is difficult. So it's very important that, that Christians should not marry a non-Christian. Now I know that, I heard that in Africa, in many places that, that uh, there's a pressure that women have to get married. Now this is not biblical. Actually in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it talks about being single, you can dedicate your life more to God. So it's not necessary for a, a, uh, uh, Christians to get married. Uh, if, he can, if he or she cannot find a, non, uh, find a Christian. So uh, now this, that, is, that is a negative social influence. That is a negative social uh, value that is imposed on the Christians. And the Christians, the pastors should speak up against that and say that it's not necessary for uh, women to get married. Now, but the society might have, uh, might impose problem because the women cannot find a job. So that is a, a problem. But, uh, you know, that is something that um, people can find a way to solve the problem. For instance, the church can have some women, they live together in a house that they farm and they do things to support themselves and they don't because they cannot find a spouse that they don't get married. Okay. Okay, number four, how can I manage my anger as a Christian and as a pastor? Now, so we want to find out why we are angry. We're angry because someone is not behaving right. We're angry because the person is sinning, so we are angry. And the question is, does anger help? So we need to understand this. Does anger help? Does anger change the other person? Usually it doesn't. You know, if it does change someone, it's just temporary. And it just, it's just with pressure. So a person is changed by God and also when he rethinks about his behavior that he is guided to rethink about his behavior and then he repents and then he can change uh, not by pressure pressure doesn't really change a person internally so when we understand this then we tell ourselves we tell ourselves that if the person has problem if the person has sinned if I get angry, it's not going to help the person. It's not going to change the person. But if I have patience and kindness and, and explain to the person, to guide the person to understand his problem. Now, this is a skill of counseling by asking questions. Now, now let me demonstrate this. We can ask questions like, uh, what do you think about your behavior when you did that? When you uh, yell at the person, when you... Uh, do not read the Bible when you do not pray to God, when you do not obey God. What do you think about that? Uh, what do you think God will think about that? And uh, uh, to help the person to understand his behavior uh, doesn't bring honor to God and God is not happy with him. And that could uh, cause, uh, that could bring, you know, uh, give a, a foothold to the devil and the devil can come to steal, kill and destroy and his life will be influenced and he is not glorifying God and he would uh, stop the blessings of God. So when he understand that, then we'll say, okay, now you understand this is bad. Can you come to God and repent and ask God to forgive you and then ask God to give you strength to change. And how can we change? How can we change to love God, to honor God? Now that is the teaching in the next session, to use grace to motivate people. You know, God is very happy when we obey Him. God is very happy and He will bless you when you obey Him. 
God is very happy when you love Him, and then He will give you things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and a human mind cannot think of. So He will give you blessings. So do you want to change your life so that you are blessed by God? So instead of being angry, we guide the person to repentance. And then, for myself, I have convinced myself anger is no is not going to achieve anything. So very quickly, I was tell the person, well, ask the person, uh, what can he do? You know, what is the influence of the sin and how can he change? And, uh, and to guide the person to think. Now, if the person doesn't change, it is his responsibility. We don't have to get angry. If we get angry, it's not going to change him. If we get angry, it's, it just makes things worse. And also, it will, uh, we're, we're uh, giving a bad testimony. We're not giving a good testimony to the people around us. So in order to, you know, to make the best of our life that we are pleasing to God and also we are blessing people, we say, we just manage it. So we have to talk to ourselves and say, if I get angry, it's going to hurt myself, hurt my reputation, hurt my ministry. So I'm going to just trust in God, relying on God, and then guide the person to change. And uh, if he doesn't change, it is his problem. And I can... Uh, you know, be patient with him, uh, even though he doesn't change now, but we'll let him know, you know, it's, it's destructive, so do you want to repent? And if he wants to repent, then, then we'll start to help him to change. And we can ask him, how can you change? What are some behavior you can, you know, uh, you can have in order to change your behavior? You know, uh, so in... Like, for instance, to stop someone from being angry all the time, he can change his thinking and say, I don't have to be influenced by other people. God will continue to bless me. Therefore, I can uh, praise God and relax in God and have peace and, and strength. And then I can overcome my problem without anger. So any kind of problem can be overcome when we have a good relationship with God and have the wisdom of God to handle it. And we don't have to... Uh, change our behavior or change someone else's behavior with anger or yelling. You know, it doesn't help to yell. Or yell. Okay? Okay, uh, number f five. Can we lose your salvation forever? Now, if a person doesn't repent and sin and continue to sin without repentance, then he can lose his salvation forever. Now, if he repents, if he truly asks God to forgive him, uh, and he, you know, that he, he truly feels sorry in his heart. The Holy Spirit causes him to feel sorry, and he trusts in God, and he holds on to God. Then he hasn't lost his salvation. If a person has lost his salvation, he would have lost the, the, uh, the move of the Holy Spirit. Uh, according to John 16, verse 8, there it says that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, comes... Uh, to uh, bring us to conviction of our, of our sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. So, when a person has this conviction, and also uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, that it talks about that when we, uh, you know, that when a person trusting Jesus as his Savior, confess that Jesus is his Savior, this is uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. Without the work of the Holy Spirit, no one can confess that Jesus is the Lord. So if he truly repent of his sin and truly trust in Jesus as the Savior, then he is still born again. The Holy Spirit is still with him. Now in uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 8, uh, no, I'm sorry, chapter 6 and chapter 10, that it talks about warning about people uh, lose, you know, forsake the Lord and also sin willfully, they can lose salvation. Now, there is a possibility that a person can lose salvation, uh, and especially the sin of uh, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The person can lose salvation and cannot turn back to God again. So we should not say, okay, it's okay to sin now and then wait until later I repent. It's not okay. So we should not say that. We should say every sin can cause our eternal damnation. So we should repent and turn away from our sins and hate the sins and knowing that the destruction sometimes cannot be reversed because the Bible does warn about that losing salvation forever 
in you can read uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 10 it talk about that warning now that warning could be about blaspheming the Holy Spirit but it also talked about forsaking the Lord and also sinning willfully so it uh, there is a uh, possibility a person can lose salvation but so long as the person still truly repent and truly trust in Jesus as a savior and want to follow Jesus then he has not lost his salvation yet so I hope we don't you know take it uh, easy and just say it's okay to sin it's not okay to sin that you know it's it can be misleading when we tell people when you sin you just repent and it's okay it's we should tell them when you truly repent God will forgive you but it's not okay to continue sin if you continue sin you can there is a possibility then there you can you can bring damage that is irreversible that you can uh, lose some of the things like uh, you can lose your reputation you can lose the trust of people you can lose the relationship with people you can lose your family and the worst of all is that you can lose salvation so uh, we don't teach people okay you can sin forever and ever and just so long as you repent and you still can be saved there is a possibility because according to Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 10 there is a possibility when people commit sin in a certain way now for sure blaspheming the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven but can a person's heart be so hardened that he cannot be restored uh, we don't know but we tell people don't sin don't sin willfully okay number six how can we help a brother and sisters who knows the truth but they do do quite opposition uh, they opposite the truth they so they quietly oppose the truth then there is a danger that they are not born again there is a danger that they are not following God and they think that it's okay so this is not okay it is not okay so uh, now we when we want to change people we want to use grace primarily and then we use the law we use grace to tell people God loves you and God has all kinds of blessings he wants to pour into your life he can bless your whole life that you can have joy and strength and you have peace and you have God's plan in your life God can give you health and and provide for you and he can bless your family and everything and eternal life so God has all these blessings he gives to you uh, and do you want to follow God if you want to follow God you love God and obey God all the way then God will bless you all the way but when we sin when in the secret when in secret we oppose the truth that is sin because now there are different kinds of sins there's a sin of weakness the person wants to follow God but you know he has weakness so his sins uh, sometimes that is the sin of weakness but there is a sin of you know there's active sin opposing the truth is active sin for instance the person you know oppose the church oppose the pastor uh, oppose the truth and say things against the truth he attacks Christians attacks the church that is opposing the truth that is you know opposing God and that is actively sinning it's not just a sin of weakness sin of weakness is that he wants to obey God but he has the weakness and therefore he is weak and he cannot uh, obey God totally now this is still sin and this is can be still serious it can still give the devil a foothold but when a person opposes the truth it is active active sinning it's serious if he's speaking things against the truth okay then he should be warned when you do that you're opposing God when you're opposing God God can oppose you and God can do things against you and God can punish you and and there can be a time that you can lose your salvation forever and so this is warning now as I said a mature Christian a uh, mature Christian should have grace as the main motivation that they know that God is so many blessings I don't want to lose my salvation and I, I want to 
get the blessings from God, I want to be blessed by God, strengthened by God, I want to enjoy life, then his motivation is mainly from uh, the grace of God and not from the law. But the law is like warning. It's warning especially to Christians who sin habitually. They should be warned when you sin like this. It is terrible. It's serious. Okay, now I don't, I don't know for sure if you're talking about opposing the truth. Now, if you talk about like he really doesn't live the truth, that is another thing, okay? For instance, now opposing the truth is like opposing the church and saying things against the Bible, saying things against the truth and say, well, you don't have to believe the Bible. We don't have to believe in God. You don't have to have, you know, uh, you the Bible is telling lies and the Christians are telling lies to make you believe in Jesus. Now that is opposing the truth. But if a Christian, uh, they live the life not according to the truth. That is, they maybe they tell lies because of the weakness. They tell lies and they uh, commit adultery. They have lust. Uh, they steal money and things like that. That is not opposing the truth. They are living, following the world. We still want them. Opposing the truth is a more serious sin because it's opposing the truth of God, opposing God. Now, the other sin are serious also. Uh, that sinning of adultery or stealing, of uh, uh, hurting people, uh, these are serious also. Lust, these are serious also. But we just tell them that, you know, when we commit sins, it can bring, uh, you know, punishment from God and uh, you can destroy your life. Satan will come to steal, kill your life and, and destroy your life and you can lose everything you have. So do you want Jesus to bring salvation to you? When you say you believe in Jesus but you're not living according to the Word of God, then you're not saved. Now as we said earlier, we have, let me show you this Bible verse that we showed earlier. Galatians 5, 19-21 that uh, all these kind of sins, uh, people who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So even when people say, I repent and ask God to forgive, but then they're not truly repentant. Like they commit a sin and then they do it again. Uh, after they repent, then they're not really repentant. Then there is a danger. He's not repentant and he's not really as, you know, not trusting in Jesus, uh, God's forgiveness, he can lose his salvation. He can, he might not be saved. Okay, so we help them by with the grace of God and also with uh, the the law to warn them. Okay, number seven: Is it right for someone to repent daily about the same thing? Now, if he just commit the sin one time, and he continue to confess the sin, that is not necessary. That he truly repent. Now, when he think, keep thinking about the sin, he can learn to hate the sin. For instance, he has committed adultery, and he thinks it's very. Uh, he believes that he knows that he's very serious. Therefore, he daily repents. Uh, it's not necessary. He truly repent. Lord, I'm very sorry that I committed adultery. Please forgive me. Please wash me clean with your blood. Please give me salvation. Then he's truly repentant. God forgives them. But when he keeps thinking about that, what can he do? He can learn to hate the sin. He will say, yes, now I understand that adultery is terrible. After I commit adultery, then I continue to feel very bad. I feel very, uh, uh, you know, I just feel guilt all the time. I understand that. Therefore, I understand that sins are very destructive. Therefore, I don't want to sin anymore. I hate the sin. I don't want to continue sin. I don't want sin to destroy my life. So that is the right attitude. Uh, he doesn't have to continue to repent of his sin, even though it's not wrong, totally, that he thinks about it and then repents. But if he doesn't believe in Jesus' forgiveness, then it's a sin. You know, that he, uh, he, he thinks that, you know, I, I repent and then uh, I, I ask God to forgive me, forgive me and I truly repent and tr truly trust in Jesus' 
forgiveness and Jesus still is not forgiving me, therefore I need to repent every day, then that is sinning because he's not trusting in God's word. But if he's just saying, I still feel sorry for, for my sins, I, I'm very sorry I hurt my wife, and God, God please forgive me. If he continue to do that, uh, it's fine in a way because he is really thinking about how serious that sin is. So he continue to repent of his sin. Con uh, he continued to ask God to forgive him, continue to uh, want to, uh, you know, to, to be repentant of the sin. Uh, that is fine, uh, but he doesn't need to do that. But we need to say, next time I really don't want to commit that sin. Next time I really want to obey God and follow God.